snow out of the snow For my dog, he's a booze hound He carries a bottle of whiskey but drinks it all before he even gets to the door Not the kind of dog you want Cocktails of Tiki King, and we're here. We're here, and you're here, and I'm here, and we're all here together, and uh, and doing our thing, doing that whatever that thing, whatever that thing may be. And I'm hoping. So here's, we're gonna have to we're, we have a question. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, we're trying out a whole new. We're always trying out new sound systems. Last week it determined we it determined it. When I say it, you know what I mean. We're talking about the unnameable. And let's not talk about it. Um, but, uh, but last week, uh, we, we determined that uh, our microphone basically was absolutely doing nothing at all. Um, so, how are we going to know if this one is working? I don't know. Um, I can well, try to make it. Can people hear you? Can, you, can, you can, can everybody hear me? Did you hear that song? Did you hear that lovely song? We're going to have to wait for the four second delay to find out what's going on. She said it sounds good. Can you hear that? It's like. It's like Drink sounds. You like won't miss a bit. Um, well, I guess we're just gonna, if it sounds good, if it sounds good, it sounds good. We're just gonna have to go with it. Yeah. So how are you guys doing? How are you doing, Boosketeers? Did anybody, uh, is anybody mixing along? I know tonight's drinks, a little bit, a uh, little out there because they're, uh, they call for some ingredients. In fact, I had to go out. We had to make a, a gorilla run out to the uh, state liquor store and pick ourselves up. Uh, a bottle of uh, one of the boozes because it's not it's not something that you normally see normally normal which we're not normal so that's probably why we don't see it it's like that's the thing it's like ghosts right people who are open to ghosts see ghosts people who are open to booze uh, you just drink with them so um, but uh, yeah so so if you can't drink along it's okay yeah, yeah, do whatever you can have yourself something else you know uh, mix up something that's just say, just pretend. Just like say, yeah, that's what, that's it. Yeah, I made it. It's good. Whatever. Which I'm, so right now I'm, uh, my pre-drink drinks, uh, before the show, you know, I have my pre-show drink that I use when I'm writing my extensive notes so that, uh, so that, you know, we know that everything goes smoothly. Um, so tonight I'm drinking a, uh, it's basically a um, dark and stormy. Using some, some delicious plantation OFTD overproof rum and some Bundaberg, uh, this stuff here. Bundaberg. Ginger beer and uh, some fresh lime juice. And I actually threw in, I threw in, so uh, one of our, one of the, we've got, there's a Maggie loose. There's a Maggie loose on the bar. Is there something unplugged or plugged in? Or? I'm just replugging everything. Why is that? Can nobody hear me? Okay. I thought people could hear me. I thought it was all good. They can hear you. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Which, that makes this show pretty typical. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so I'm enjoying basically a nice, delicious, dark and stormy, uh, heavy on the ginger, getting ready, getting ready for what comes next, you know? Because you never know. You never know what's going to come next on the show. <laughs> Except I don't know. I don't think we're lighting anything on fire. Yeah, see? He doesn't like that. I was thinking... I was actually thinking of, of uh, I had this vision, I had this, this flash, this flash, this vision, of a, of a t-shirt, and, but I don't know, I need to get someone to do it, because I don't know that I can do it justice, but um, I have this like idea of like a caricature of Captain Boo's Nanas, right, and just like him, like going nutty, and uh, with a, like, a, like a cocktail glass spilling and stuff, and, and I just wanted to say, set it on fire, I think that would be, I think that'd be a good, uh, a good Boo's Kateer shirt. Let, what do you know? What do you guys think? You, you let me know. If you like that idea, I'll see what I can do. So I'll, I'll uh, get it up there and maybe we can figure out, you know, make it into a t-shirt. I don't know. Maybe Captain Boo's dance will work. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Set it on fire. Yeah. He likes that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't blame him. We had a, <clears throat> what was that? Was that last weekend? I guess it was. I don't know. I, 
can't unload anymore. No, two weekends ago, whatever it was. Yeah, we were out having fun with the drinking the white Russians and blasting off black powder into the night, big flaming. Yeah, Captain Booth Dan is down here. He wanted a white Russian. Yeah. He said, I don't care, fire. So, anyways, I digress. They like the shirt idea. You like the shirt idea? <laughs> I'm not sure what else I can do. But I just thought, I just I had this flash of Captain Booth Dan set it on fire. And I thought, you know, that could be that could be like the show's catchphrase. Set it on fire. And they pelted us with rocks and garbage. Set it on fire. Um, anyway, so, what are we doing tonight? Well, if you're like me, you got started early. Uh, I know that, uh, so So, are the booze tears, is anybody going to mix along tonight? Does anybody, uh, does anyone have the, the rare and strange ingredients that we need? Ingredients? Not for the drinks? And if not, did you make something up that's equally uh, booze filled so you can pretend and just go along with it? Why not? So tonight, tonight, tonight's theme, tonight's thing, tonight's drink, um, comes to us because of the ukulele. That's right, the lowly four-stringed instrument uh, coming out of Hawaii, sort of. Um, I don't know, so some of you may not know this, uh, which means you probably don't follow me, um, but uh, some kind of a, a little bit of a, of a ukulele, a uk a ukulele, I'm a little ukulele, no. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of like a ukulele geek, kind of fanatical about the whole uh, thing. Um, and I devoted a, a large portion of my uh, existence to um, documenting ukuleles and different brands and all sorts of minutia. There's all kind. Of, if you if you have any like even if you have a mild interest in ukuleles, there's whole sections on my website that will make you question why you ever bothered to look because it's way too much stuff. But uh, <clears throat> so uh, so ukuleles, right? Ukuleles, Hawaiiana, Hawaii tropical drinks. Uh, stuff, things, nonsense. That's us. At least those last parts. Um, but uh, but yeah, ukuleles. You know, uh, there's there's like a, they're very integral into the whole tiki bar thing, which some of you may or may not have noticed. I have an interest in. Um, but uh, yeah, so ukulele. So all right, let's let's digress. Let's let's time travel, shall we? Let's time travel. Let's go back to, let's go back to say, 1879. Let's go back to say, say we're in the port in Honolulu. We're in Hawaii, right? Maybe, I don't know if it was Honolulu. Maybe it was. I don't know. See, I'm not a historian. I'm a drunk. They're, they seem the same because there's a lot of information getting spewed that you don't care about. But trust me. Um, but uh, no, so let's let's say 1879. So in the port in Hawaii, um, at that time. There was a whole bunch of people coming over from uh, from uh, Spain, right, from Madeira, um, and from uh, different uh, Portugal, and um, a lot of people coming to work in the cane fields. And uh, one of the things that happened was one of the immigrants in 1879, the ship Ravens Craig, docked in Hawaii, and there was a fellow there who was, I think, it was yeah, it was uh, I want to say Yao Fernandez. Um, was so excited after the months and months at sea coming all the way from, from Spain uh, that, he, that he jumped out and started just playing, went crazy playing this instrument, which was actually a Portuguese instrument called, I believe it was called a machete. But it was a small, a small instrument. And there was some, uh, some things happened and they changed some tunings. And to make a long story short, that is what became the ukulele in Hawaii. Um, they took basically the tuning of one instrument and the size of, the, of another and um, made this instrument, the ukulele, and it became a big hit. And uh, so then, you know, you come forward f a few years from 1879, um, ukule uh, ukuleles started, to, everybody was building them, it was crazy, uh, Hawaii became a 50th state, tiki bars became a thing, and then suddenly, synonymous, we got, what do we have? What? You tell me? No, I'll tell you. We had hula girls and ukuleles became synonymous <coughs> with the whole tiki scene, right? And back then, if you could, you know, it, 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 you, you fast forward into like the 20s, you got people in raccoon coats driving jalopies and strumming ukuleles and having a great time and bathtub gin and all that sort of thing and prohibition and then the repeal of prohibition. And you got, it's like, it's a whole thing that there's an interconnected thing that's it's woven like a tapestry of booze 
and ukuleles and tiki bars and a whole this whole thing, right? But um, but but I digress again. I'm digressing and time traveling at the same time, which is which is kind of a which is kind of like a a weird uh, zigzag. Um, but uh, so what? What does this matter? You ask. What does it matter? It doesn't. But it is interesting to me because. You know, all this minutia is the sort of stuff that I strive, I strive on. No, I thrive, I thrive, I strive to thrive on the minutia, which keeps me alive. There we go. And so, let's go even forward, forward or more. Are let's you making a drink more. yet? What's that? Did you make a drink yet? No, I'm still drinking the drink that I drank before. Oh. But the second one, should I make a drink and then we'll talk more? Yeah. Okay, well, so... <clears throat> Both of tonight's drinks. So here's the thing. There's a lot of setup. Um, so both of tonight's drinks come from Ukulele Player Magazine, uh, and they uh, these these are drinks. Well, at least one of them came from uh, the Ukulele Club of Santa Cruz, which is my hometown and my home club. Uh, I was there at the founding of it back in the back when it was in the Mr. Pete Thomas's living room. Um, but uh, one of the one of the so, uh, you know, a huge driving force in that um, friend of mine, he moved off to, uh, to Hawaii and formed now what's one of the biggest ukulele clubs in Hawaii. But uh, one of the second biggest driving forces uh, was my good friend Shandor Naslatsky, um, who's a good Hungarian who's all about ukuleles and cocktails. Uh, but uh, he brought forth a drink for Ukulele Player Magazine, and it's called the Monterey Bay Breeze. And that's one of tonight's drinks. So it goes kind of like this. Let's see here. Monterey Bay Breeze. Ingredients. What we're going to need is some gin, which I just happen to have. Dun, dun, dun. Gin. We're going to need some lemon juice. I got lemon juice and lime juice. This one is lemon juice over here. We're going to need some uh, Canton liqueur. That's ginger liqueur for those of you playing along at home. Double score for getting the spelling right. Uh, we're going to need some elderflower liqueur. I have a tiny bottle of this, because you know what? Elderflower, typically not my favorite flavor. Uh, so I didn't buy the big bottle, but I got enough to make the drink tonight. Uh, we're going to need some bitters, which I'm going to go with the standard Agnostura. We're going to need some ginger ale, which, as I said earlier, because I've been drinking on it already, like that. Uh, we've got the Bundaberg. Ginger beer, technically, but what's beer? What is ale? Beer. Yeah. See how I did that? Um, so, you know, to, to, and say, okay, there we go. So, I need a tall glass. So, let, hold on. It's okay because I was already drinking ginger ale out of this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna consider that uh, non-contamination. Want me to give you another glass? No, because I need a tall glass that. Uh, it's already had half the ingredients in it already. So. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, what do we need, Mr. Shondor Naslansky? I don't know. I don't even know if it's watching. Um, well, according to the agree agreements list, <clears throat> which I found online, we're going to need one and a half ounces of gin. And I'll need some uh, measuring device. <clears throat> Ah. 1.5 ounces of my favorite gin. Um, Bombay Sapphire. <clears throat> Been drinking this stuff for a long time. Not that particular bottle. I went through a few different ones. but uh, Okay, and then an ounce of lemon juice. And I've never tried. This is... We're going into a unmarked territory here because I've never tried this drink. It's always makes, it makes me happy to do the show and to, and to try a new cocktail and see where it takes us. We're ready. So we need a half ounce of the ginger liqueur. for the next one, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick it here in the bar back. 
All righty, then we're going to need the St. Germain Elderflower Liqueur. Once again, I have not had this, but, uh, you know, elderflowers. Yep. <clears throat> um, I remember Musketeer Turk getting some elderflower soda, and he was not pleased. But, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he did. It's not good. No, it is not good. Um, so a half ounce of the uh, St. Germain Elderflower Liqueur. <laughs> that in there. One dash bitters. Dash. And then it says to stir it up. And to use your face, I don't see, here's, I don't know. It, it says, I'm gonna follow, I have to follow the, the directions explicitly. Uh, which usually means that there's uh, naked people. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> all right, give that a stir. Top up. It says, uh, I'm gonna swirl, swirl the ice cubes around a few times to mix the ingredients. Okay. But now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, because I have, because you'll see in a second. Uh, it says to top up with ginger ale. Chill. And then, well, here's, which is why, uh, add your favorite swizzle stick and serve immediately. Refreshing. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can see where this, this would be probably best enjoyed on the veranda. I would go there, but the microphone won't reach, and it's just dark and cold, cold outside. But on a hot summer day, I will say, if it's a hot summer day and you got nothing better to do than play your ukulele, you mix yourself a mod, mod, uh, mi mi take two. If it's a hot summer day and you got nothing better to do than to play your ukulele, mix yourself up a Monterey Bay breeze. Add your favorite swizzle stick and enjoy it immediately, and you will not be displeased with the results. Mm. So not overly elderflowery, which is good. <clears throat> and the ginger, it actually reminds me a little bit of a mule, of a, you know, like, which it kind of is. It's got the citrus, it's got the ginger, it's got the, 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 the stuff in the booze. You come down and give it a try? Yeah. Yeah. Stick that in your gullet. See what, see what jives you. Producer Maggie. The rarely seen producer Maggie. It's pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and so the, uh, I believe, so it, it was credited to uh, to my friend Sean Ornoslansky. Um And he is actually, he's not only a, he's an extraordinary ukulele player, um, been in several ukulele-centric bands. Um, he is the staple of the ukulele scene in Santa Cruz. He is, I would say, currently probably the driving force of the ukulele club of Santa Cruz, uh, which was my, until I moved away, and other things that happened, and weirdness and whatnot, um, that was my home club, uh, and uh, he has also, he has one of, he has an extremely impressive uh, ukulele collection. The guy is, the guy collects ukuleles like fine wine. Um, he has, I mean, he has some of the, see, he has examples of ukuleles that are most people have never seen. He's got you know Martin Five Ks. He's got, I mean, anything you, you can't hardly imagine. But uh, but aside from that, aside from that, um, he is also quite the mixologist. Um, he, uh, he he's uh, you know back when I was there, it was always like hey let's let's uh, you know make up some, make some drinks and compare notes and stuff. And uh, so, Sean Dor, if you're watching, probably not because why would he? But if you're watching. Cheers, man. Good drink. But you know, so that's the thing. So, drinking and ukuleles have a rich history, at least in my arms. Um, back uh, many, many, many years ago. Let's let's should we? I'm gonna have to digress first, and then time travel, and then and then loop around. <clears throat> so. Um, uh, some of you may or may not know that I play the ukulele. They're like, 
we wouldn't know based on what we've seen so far. Um, but uh, so I, but I, but back uh, some years ago, um, I used to uh, get my kicks by I perform. I was a solo performer, um, but I, you know, I did the club circuit. I played the big venues. If you consider Borders Books to be a big venue, um, but I would go into, you know, I would just go where. I pretty much if they said, "Can you come play?" I'd say yes. But um, one of the things, one of the things, which I'll have to see. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna de mic for just a moment. I'll be right back. So. You probably can't see, but look at that. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Mini bottle. <clears throat> My ukulele case. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold it now. So, I always made sure that my ukulele case, that uh, in the little pocket that's normally reserved for a tuner and such, um, I always kept some mini bottles of rum or you know wild turkey or something like that, um, because I would I would get terrible stage fright, because you know it was just me and my ukulele, and like a half an hour to kill, and you know a bunch of people thinking that I was good, and I was like, whoa, okay, so uh, I gotta figure out a way to not care. Um, but uh, so I always carried some mini bottles in my uh, in my uh, ukulele case, and then. Uh, I remember once I was performing with, um, well, I don't know if I should name names, because I could call it, no, I'm going to. Uh, so my friend Ukulele Dick, who, which he always says it's not a condition, it's just a nickname. Um, so, uh, so Ukulele Dick, he was another performer on the circuit there. You know, we were always vying, it was like a, we were like carnies, we were like ukulele carnies. We'd throw up a lot of steel, cheat people out of their hard-earned money, and get drunk later. But. Uh, I remember one of the first times I played with him at a show, and uh, we were backstage <clears throat> getting ready for the for the whole thing to start. And I opened up my case, popped open the thing, and I actually had a I had some bottles in there, and I said, "Hey, you want a little snort before you go on stage?" He said, "Oh no, I never drink before going on stage." And I said, "Really? Because it's a uh, Glen Livet?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll have some of that." But um, apparently, it was one of his better shows. I don't know if that's true, but. Uh, I didn't know because I actually have another bottle in my bag. But, but uh, so yeah, so for at least for me, you know, playing the ukulele, having a couple drinks, it, uh, you know, helps me through the winter. But I started, so I don't know, some of you, some of you may or may not have gone as far as looking at my webpage, um, but uh, I built ukuleles. I've designed ukuleles for other people. Um, I did, uh, there's a, I don't know, name drop, is name dropping okay? Should I name drop? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know, I mean, these guys, they, these guys are like, all, all I can do is, you know, send them to jail. But, uh, no, I, I've, uh, you know, I've been very lucky in my career of designing. I did the uh, ukuleles for Bette Midler. Um, I've had different people who've come to me and for some reason, they were probably drinking, now that I think about it. They were like, drinking, you man, you do me a ukulele. And uh, you know, they were probably drunk. But um, that's not true, I know one of them doesn't drink. Uh, one, but um, but it's, it's taking me all kinds of different interesting places and one of those things which, so this whole ukulele thing, right? And drinking, so uh, back in 2011, so I've been, so there's a company called Magic Fluke. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to decide about that. Um, so there's a company called Magic Fluke that uh, they are the ones who made uh, my ukulele, which if you come to Wicked Tinker shows and you see me playing on stage, that's one of the ukuleles that uh, I do the tops for and they build the, the actual bodies. Um, but uh, back in 2011, which was a while ago now, um, we did a design for them uh, featuring, and this is the thing, <clears throat> I don't know if you probably can't see it, but so on this top, so this is a, a, a Magic Flute ukulele, but, uh, but the top features, you know, take that up there and hold it in front of the thing, mm -hmm. 
features tiki mugs uh, from all of my various luau's. And uh, as far as I know, it is probably the first and only ukulele to feature uh, tiki mugs. You know, filled with, I'm assuming, delicious tropical cocktails. But that was a, yes, that came out in 2011, ran for a while and then was discontinued. Um, that, that one that, sh that uh, producer Maggie just uh, flaunted in front of the camera there is actually number one. That was the prototype uh, that we did for that line. Um, but yeah, so I've done several designs for them over the years, built a lot of my own ukuleles, and I've had a lot of fun playing and, uh, and drinking and going to bars and playing at bars and getting free drinks. Um, because that was, that's what it's all about, really, when you think about it. Why be a musician? <laughs> For the bar tab, baby. Yeah, you can tell them I sent you. <sighs> so, anyway, so, but I digress. That was, so we're almost down to the end of this here, the Monterey Bay Breeze. Yeah, you better make it the next one. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but, so, that was Shondor, who invented the Monterey Bay Breeze, good friend of mine. Excellent, like I said, mixologist, uh, ukulele collector extraordinaire. Um, he actually, I believe, has some of my ukuleles. Uh, ukulele Dick actually has a couple of my ukuleles as well. Um, if you want to see examples of the things that I've built, go to tkking.com, go to the ukulele gallery, check it out. Don't go there now, because we're still drinking. I'll forgive you later. But uh, so our second drink of the evening, drink south, it's like, oh, it's like uh, the, the uh, like, uh, what was that? Drink up the evening. What? Tipful booze. Um, <laughs> drinks of the evening. Beautiful drinks. Wasn't that in Alice in Wonderland? That was the one I saw. Remember? It was the it was the the um. What was that thing? It had a turtle's head and a shaker for a body. Mmm, I don't know what was going on there. Stay with me. I'm here every Tuesday. Um, no, that was Soup of the Evening, which is where this whole thing started. Uh, 105 episodes. And it all came from soup, which came from sausage, which we don't like to talk about. Um, Booze. Um, so our second recipe of the evening, booze of the evening, beautiful booze, uh, is Mayamo's Rai Zha Zha. Why Zha Zha? Rai Zha Zha. Because, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so Mayamo, Mayamo, now this is, see, once again, so Mayamo is a manufacturer of ukuleles, fine, fabulous instruments for those who have a discerning nose for that which makes sounds that you cannot smell. But uh, they make good ukuleles, and uh, my good friend Aaron Kime, who's not a good friend, but an acquaintance, who we drank a lot together, and we probably said we loved each other. But you know how that is. Um, but he's, uh, he, he uh, does work for them. And uh, this, I don't know if he, I don't know if this is his recipe, but uh, I don't know. I don't know anything. What do I know? Why am I even doing this? Someone said, do a show, and I did. I have to make it all up as I go along. Um, Mayamo's Rai Zha Zha, which is a rye drink, which has Orja, which rhymes with Zha Zha. Orja, Zha, Zha, Orja, Zha. Or Zha Zha, you tell me. Um, and this calls for rye whiskey. <sighs> I love rye whiskey. There it is. Yeah, in the square bottle. No less. Uh -uh. Okay, there we go. We're all set. For this, we're going to need a shaker. In this case, a fine piña stainless steel two-piece shaker. Readily available at the Booze Teeth. Salt Lake City's own Booze Emporium that carries everything that you will need for your imbibing pleasure except for the booze, which you can get at the state store just around the corner. So, we're going to need a shaker half filled with ice. You stay.
stay in there. Okay. Two ounces of, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about this in a minute. Two ounces of rye. That's right, I said rye. I did. You, you want to, hmm? You coming at me? Spider monkey? Um, two ounces of rye whiskey. I love that sound. You know, I make that sound sometimes just because. I mean, it's like, it's, it's comforting. I don't even need to be pouring anything. It's like. Yeah, no. it makes, I know. I should do a 10 hour, like, white noise remix of just that. <laughs> you guys. Uh, I know, they're like, how can we have him committed from afar? Um, two ounces of rye whiskey. One tablespoon of lime juice. It's like essence of terror. Ah, okay. Because you don't want to use too much. If you use... Yeah, but you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to need two dashes of Angostura bitters, which I just happen to have. Isn't that weird? It's crazy. Just our bitters. We were talking about this earlier when we were out looking for um, <laughs> rose water. Um, but uh, it used to be that it was like, so we went to the store, there was like 50 kinds of bitters, right? And it used to be that there was one, and it was Agnostura, and that was like, if you could find it. And it was usually in a, it was a dusty bottle in a liquor store that nobody went to. But now you can get, you can get it all, all that stuff. It's like all over the place. Uh, and then some Agnostura. No, yes, no, no, something else. And then Orja. Ja, ja, Orja. Yeah. Which this is a, some Orja I made myself. It's really dark. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really dark because uh, I used coconut sugar, um, which, is, which is a very dark sugar uh, in my, because I make the stuff myself. Three, no. Okay, there we go. So orjat is a uh, it's a syrup uh, made from sugar and uh, almonds and uh, orange flower water and rose water and it's 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 like it's it is the like you when you make so when you make tiki drinks right which is not a correct term when you're making tropical drinks uh, and you're you're like something's missing what is it I don't know where'd it go. Who knows? Was it here before? We don't know that. I can't tell you. Um, that's probably it, is the orja, which is a strange, it's a really weird, floral, nutty, sweet essence. And it go. It, it's like you will find that in most tropical drinks call for either orja or falernum, which is similar, but falernum has more lime. Um, but uh, it's, it, it's the, it's the uh, what do the kids say these days, secret sauce? That's the stuff. Okay. There and there and then, orja, like ja ja, for the Mayan little rye ja ja. Uh, come on, let us cut a shaker, shake. <laughs> and then strain into a non-dusty glass, which I don't have, so I'm gonna have to dust one off on my shirt because. There's the dog, everyone. Oscar, that's the booze hound. Oscar the Booze Hound. He, you know, he comforts me in my time of need. <coughs> Which means he hangs out while I drink at the garage. We, we sit out in the garage, and I'll be like, <laughs> what do you think, Oscar, another beer? And he's like... Which I take as yes. That's one of the things. A good Booze Hound, they have a lot of ways of saying yes. And you can, have that, you can say, what do you say, Booze Hound? Should we have another beer? And they may just like look at you, which means yes. So get yourself a booze hound. You won't question yourself anymore. Sorry about that distraction. Was that a distraction? For some people, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Alrighty, the Milo Rajaja. 
which is like a raja. drink with Orjan in it and the uh, the combination of the two is uh, it's uh, it's surprising because rye is a uh, I don't know how many are you is, are any of the blues out there are you guys rye fans which rye, rye I, wonder, I know rye is Reese is a rye is a rye fan no um, <laughs> Reese is a rye Reese is a rye fan because he's Reese I fan He's, gonna, he's glad he's not watching the show. That's for sure. Um, no, rye is one of those things. So we've talked before about different things. And not all of them apply to your everyday life. And if they do, then you're probably my uh, fake brother-in-law. Um, when it comes to booze, anyway. Um, but uh, So tonight, so, so rye, you may be saying, Tea King, what's the deal? Is the deal. Well, uh, American whiskeys, which are also called bourbons, um, are generally made from corn, um, but uh, there's a type of whiskey mm, called rye, and it's made from rye. And you know about rye because you've had rye bread, because you've been to the deli and you've had yourself pastrami on rye, and don't tell me that you haven't. Because if you tell me that you haven't, I'll believe you. And then where will we be? That doesn't help us. Why'd you why, why would you think that would help? But the important thing about rye, don't eat moldy rye bread. No. Because rye mold is called ergot. And ergot will take you places you don't necessarily want to go. And if you do, you'll see me. And that's never a good thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, rye is basically whiskey. Instead of being made from corn or rice or wheat, it's made from rye. And rye has a very particular flavor, which the reason I said that before is because if you ever had rye bread, you went, oh, what is this? And that's rye. Which is also because they usually put caraway seeds in rye, which is probably what you tasted, which tastes like licorice. And you said, why does my bread taste like licorice? And you, because you were like, because ham. There you go. I know, I brought it full circle for crazy people like me. Hmm. But uh, no, rye is a type of bourbon, type of American whiskey, uh, which is distinct unto itself in that it has a flavor like no other. And if it has a flavor like others that aren't rye, it's not good rye. I remember my sister used to be saying this thing, so tonight I got to, uh, some nice 90 proof Ezra Brooks straight rye whiskey, straight rye ris risky, risky rye, as we called it in high school. Um, but uh, it used to be there was pretty much, rye was really hard to find. Um, there was pretty much old overholt, which we called old overcoat, because it kind of, that's what it tasted like. You know, it was like whiskey that a bum had like filtered through its pockets. <coughs> but, um, but rye is one of those things which uh, a rye old fashioned, that's a thing of beauty, man. It's like nothing else that is out there except for it which is no longer out there because you're drinking it. So do you want to sample this before I kill <clears> this? <throat> it's good stuff, I think. Producer Maggie, Producer Maggie, everybody. Producer Maggie, it's time. You kind of go like, eat it like right. But there we go. So there it is, folks. The Maya Mo Rye Zha Zha. <laughs> Good stuff. <coughs> rye, I'll tell you, so... I don't know if I told the story before. Maybe I have, I don't know. But uh, I remember once, uh, many years ago, my sister, who uh, actually, Boosketeer Danny gave her a tattoo this afternoon. Um, my sister, once for Christmas, sent me half a bottle of rye. And I remember opening it. I was like, I opened this, and I'm like, you drank, you drank half the bottle and then sent it to me. You know, at first I was like, I was not, I was, I was at all at once. I was like, 
you know, impressed and appalled uh, because she didn't send me the whole bottle. But, um, but then she said, no, I, I poured half of it into another receptacle so we could have a drink together. And we'd be drinking with the same bottle. And I thought, oh, man, that's awesome. So if you have a real friend out there, give them half a bottle of booze and you keep the other half and then you call them up and say, let's drink some booze together. And you can actually drink the same booze at the same time. There you go. That's the nugget right there. So there you go, folks. There you go, booze tears. That's all I have. That's it. That's it for tonight. That's it for this week, this Tuesday, this ukulele, booze, hound, rye, whiskey, maya, mo, ja, ja, raja, or ja kind of evening. Because sometimes, doesn't matter. Sometimes you give what you've got, and what you've got is what you give, and what you gave is what you had, and what you had is what you can offer. And if you have what you offer and what you gave, then what you gave was what you had. And that was pretty much enough. And I'd say, why not? So until next week, Booskateers, go to my website. Go to my website, Tiki King at TikiKing.com is my email. You can send me suggestions on how to make this program somehow interesting. Uh, or you can tell us where we can go. Not to hell. We've already gotten that one. Um, but if you have a bar in your neighborhood that you think would be fun to do the show from, let us know. If you got a drink you'd like to see us drink, let us know. If you've got a place, if you've got a couch, if you have a well-stocked liquor cabinet and a couch that folds out into a bed, because I'm not, you know, that easy, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, until next week, Booskateers, this is Tiki King, and I say good night and good drinking.